the Victor Church. We're glad to have you with us, and uh, trust you'll get ministered. We're going to complete our series and our teaching on uh, establishing priorities in life. Praise the Lord! And as soon as I get this tagged up and get us signed on, uh, so that all my friends will see us out here, they can join us and be a part of the service tonight. Praise God! Uh, our our foundation text for this teaching is found in Luke chapter ten, and, and I just turn that down. Look at it. God don't like ugly. There we go. Um, Luke chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. And it says, But Martha was cumbered about with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me alone? I'm sorry. I better back up because I, I just read that part. Um, verse 38, okay, of uh, Luke chapter 10 says, Now it came to pass as they went, they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me here to serve alone? And uh, bid her, therefore, that she come help me. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are careful about and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. In other words, at this moment in time in life, Mary decided what was of a higher priority to do the traditional um, servitude of, you know, serving, taking care of the table, doing things like that, or to sit and hear what Jesus had to say. And she chose to hear what Jesus had to say. She wanted to be a part of what Jesus was saying, okay? And so, uh, we came from that. We just began talking about the priorities of life, and uh, we, we're covering the top five. Um, we're not, you know, I mean, we can go do other things, you know, your golf, your golf game, your your tennis, you know, um, you know, going to a movie. All, that all stuff kind of falls somewhere else, but it doesn't fall in your top five, okay? And there's a lot of people I get up come Sunday morning right by the golf course, and they, they got it out of balance because they, they'll, they'll <clears throat> Sunday morning is their golf time. And um, it's not a good golf time. It's a good time to go to church. Amen? So we cover this saying the first priority is God, your, intimate, your personal relationship with God. Uh, second is your spouse, your relationship with your spouse. Third was your children. And last week we talked about your relationship to your local church. Uh, and we said that comes before your job. Now, some people may want to interchange that and say your job comes. But really, uh, your church comes first before your job. It comes prior to your job. Uh, because you can be making good money and be sick and, I have it and, and lose it all. You can have good money, make good money, and your, your uh, children are all messed up. You can have good money, good job, and never spend time with your spouse or not be able to go to church. So um, that job has to come down here somewhere else, a little bit, just a little bit lower, uh, and that in subordinate to your local church, because your local church is where you get fed, you get taught, you get to grow in Christ, and you'll be a better employee in a good local church, because they'll teach you how to submit, obey authority, how to, to do and to serve as unto the Lord, okay? And so, praise the Lord. Look here in Ephesians chapter 5, our first uh, scripture for your job. In chapter 6, in verses 5 through 8, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. I trust y'all are getting there sooner or later. Okay? Um, and it says here in verse 5, it says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, which with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Okay? So it says here we're to do this as unto Christ. And it says, singleness are sincerity, in sincerity. Not with eye service. And what's eye service? You do right when they're looking. Now, we all, we've all worked jobs, and everybody, when the boss was out, they goofed off. They drive up in the parking lot, and somebody's saying, hey, so-and-so's here. Everybody went to work acting like they'd been busting it the whole time they were gone. Now, these days, you can't get away with it's good because most, a lot of the companies have uh, cameras that they could pick up on their phones and look at and just look check in on work while you're while they're out and know what's going on and um, but 
Get, say, do, do your job with eye service. Don't do it just, you know, when they're looking and when they're around. Uh, we're to do it all the time um, because that's just being a man pleaser. Um, but as the servants of Christ, and notice he says here, there's a relationship. Your relationship to the Lord should cause you to be a different employee. Now, in this case, they're using the word servant and masters. Uh, I, I would submit to you that in, in our context of today, in our culture, we would be talking about employee-employer relationship. Okay, same principles here. Um, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Um, now, y'all know I took a job this past year as a teacher assistant in one of the schools here. And um, I, I, get all, I get all kinds of compliments. Um, my principal told me I was the best hire he's done in 11 years of doing what he does. Other people come to me and said, you need to go... Uh, finish, you know, some work, you know, degree work, and become an administrator, become an assistant principal. Um, I get, you know, I get told all the time how much of a blessing I am in what I do. Now, I know there are people that, you know, they'll tell you, you know, they'll say, what are you going to do today? Because it's a teacher work day, and I don't do lesson plans. I say, well, I'm going to find something to do. They'd say, man, I just go hide in my office because you've got to be there. I mean, if it's, a, if it's a work day, even there's nothing for you to do except sit in your office and, you know, twiddle your thumbs, you've got to be there, okay? And uh, special, on mandatory work days especially. Um, but I'm like, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to do something. I'm here, to, I'm here you know, um, I told my boss, I, the principal, I told him, I said, I want to have it that when I leave, the footprint or the fingerprint of me making things better is there. That I leave it better than I found it. That when I'm when I'm done, when I, I quit working here, and everybody looks over, they they think Mr. Taylor did that. Mr. Taylor brought that to the table. He did this and changed that and made this happen. And and I did a whole lot of that this past year. Not bragging on me, but see, I'm I'm a servant of Christ. I honor Christ in my work. Okay, I'm not getting over. I'm not looking for get over time. All right, I'm not being a man pleaser. A lot of things I'm doing, nobody's seeing it get done. They find out later, but they don't, you know, they're not seeing it get done. We had a situation this past year. They had painted the wall in one of our classrooms right next to my office because um, the, uh, the EC principal wanted the EC students to have just kind of a neat classroom because instead of getting, always kind of getting the idea, you get the hand-me-downs. They wanted to have, so she had a special wall painted by, by the county. Well, the kids found a bubble in the paint, a little vinyl paint. You know what happens with that, don't you? Start, and you can just start peeling it off. And they had peeled off a section about this big. And, and so I, I went and put in a work order and said, we need to get this fixed. I said, if we don't, it's going to get bigger. Well, the county came out, looked at it. You know, they're going to fix it. Well, two months later, they didn't. It was this big. They just kept peeling and peeling and peeling. You know, they'd be in the class, and they'd be sure to peel off a little bit. And they start, then they start writing graffiti in it. And um, so... When we got to the end of the year when there was no, um, no students in, in the school or I wasn't re responsible to do anything, during testing I did some of this too because I wasn't, I wasn't helping with the testing on all, all the time. And uh, so I just went to the, to the uh, custodian, head custodian, and said, have you got any sheetrock mud? Yeah. So I'll bring my blades from the house. You let me have the mud. And so because, because of the lip, you could paint it, but they could just come right back and pick it right back up. You know, there's a little bit of a lip there. They They'll get it going again. So I had to, had to mud all the edges, sand it, get it all smoothed off where there was no lip for them to get their finger under and pick the paint back up. And then I re and then he had the paint. So I brought rollers from home and everything and my, uh, my drop cloths and repainted it. Well, people say, why are you doing that? Because it needs to be done. You know, I mean, this is, I, I'm here. I'm serving Christ. My, my actions honor the Lord. And, and I've been told I've become such a valuable asset. I'm well, invaluable. It's just they can't replace what I do. All right? I give it all my, um, my student that, was, that I was primarily, not only but primarily assigned to, um, had failed his English and his math last fall. Not, this, not, not last fall, last spring, not 2017. So when he went into his senior year, he was still a junior because he had, didn't pass math or English. They're on block system, like a semester system. And so 
my goal was to get him to get that so he could take English four and English and, and his fourth math the spring semester. He kind of passed. But see, I had to do all kinds of staying with him and working with him and going the extra mile. And a lot of times what happens is is we, we try to give it a shot. If you don't get it, tough. Because that, obviously that's what happened the time before. Nobody got him through. And um, he passed both English and math, got into this semester, and got about around Easter, and he was not going to pass English. Told him, told the, told the EC department heads, told the principal, he said, told the guidance counselors, I'm telling you right now, he is not going to finish. Unless we get something done, he's not. I mean, I'm, I'm jumping up and down screaming, I need help to get him across the line. And um, we got some things situated, got it, was able to get it done. He graduated. Yes. Yeah. Got my picture with him. He graduated. He was, he was so excited because he, he knew he wasn't going to graduate. He was in trouble. Um, and um, it was just great that he got, he got it done. And um, we were so happy to have him done. <laughs> and he was happy to be done. But it was all because of extra effort and, and putting things out there that, that weren't required, weren't necessary. Uh, you got to understand, I took a job. I had no idea what I was doing. I was clueless. People go to school to do what I was doing. Get trained. They, they take training to do what I was doing. But huh, I have a skill set. I've pastored for th over 30 years. I've dealt with people. Okay? Uh, and I'm not trying to brag on me. What I'm trying to say is because I'm, I'm, my job is not to work with eye service. Like I'm doing something when the boss is around and then go off and hide and do nothing when they're not around. Okay? That's not, how we, that's not how we do. We are to serve as Christ so that everyone knows that our work effort and our work um, ethic, work ethic is consistent. Okay? All right, where was that? Um, six, five, six, 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 six. Uh, <clears throat> Doing the will of God from the heart with good will, doing service as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that whatsoever good thing a man, any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Uh, Amplified Classic says, Servants or slaves, be obedient to those who are your physical masters, having respect for them and eager concern to please them, in singleness of motive with all your heart, as service to Christ himself. Not in the way of eye service as if they were watching you and only to please men, but as servants or slaves of Christ, doing the will of God heartily and with your whole soul, rendering service readily with um, good will as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive his reward from the Lord, whether he is slave or free. Praise the Lord. Let's go over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. You know how it is tonight, when we, we get down to these last uh, teachings, we may finish and be done uh, early, or we can get on a rabbit trail and say, well, we're going to have to come back next week. <laughs> Has happened. Right when I thought we were done. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 6, looking at verse 1 through 7. That as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them. But because they are brethren, rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit, these things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strives, strives of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, and surmisings perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Shandai. Notice he says that you are to, um, that it is that you're to, you're to uh, honor. Now, how many people trash talk the boss? Get in groups and trash talk the boss, you know. Uh, honor them, okay. Honor our masters, alrighty, and and, and do our work, 
um, so that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Uh, 1 Peter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but to the, also to the froward. Now that, uh, that word froward um, carries with it, let me see verse 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. Harsh, harsh, even to the harsh. See, it's easy. Have we ever, have we, it's easy to do work hard and good for people that are easy to get along with. But not everybody's going to have a boss that's easy to get along with. You can have a jerk. I mean, he could come in when he pulls a shirt and rips it apart. He has a great big J on it for jerk. Okay? I mean, we've all worked for people that were jerks. Maybe in some cases we were the jerks. All right? Uh, but he says here that, uh, you know, we are to, we are to uh, be subject to our, them, our bosses. Not only the ones that are good and gentle, but to the harsh. For th listen to what Paul, uh, Peter says. This is thankworthy. If a man or for conscience toward God endure grief and suffering wrongfully, uh, for what glory is it if when you are buffeted in your, uh, for your faults, you take it patiently? But if you do well and suffer for it and you take it patiently, this is acceptable unto God. Okay? Amen? All right. Then back in Genesis, in the Old Testament, it says here in verse Genesis 26, 32, And it came to pass that same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged, and said unto him, We have found water. They went out and digged. They dug, his servants went out and dug a well. You know, um, Joshua 18, 3, And Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long are ye slack to go and possess the land which the Lord your God, hath, your father's, of your fathers have given you. We can't be slack about doing what God wants us to do. We've got to be diligent. Amen? Um, look at Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Verse 9. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, and so shall thy poverty come, on, come, come as one that tra traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Wow. It's going to come on you. I mean, it's just going to flat out come on you. It says, as one traveler or a prowler. It says, as a prowler. Your part. Now, I can, I can tell off from my brother now because you know the company is no longer in business. Um, he he, my whole family. Uh, I, I I even worked there for a summer in, in um, for an uh, for a um, an OJT an own job training thing at Burroughs Welcome in Greenville, which was a pharmaceutical plant. Um, they they had moved down to North Carolina from New York. They took their research laboratories and put it in Research Triangle Park a lot. That weird shaped building I've seen it before. You know that kind of that funky weird that 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 was research, that was Burr's Welcome. Now it's dead right now. Somebody's bought it and they're gonna keep some of it. They're gonna tear a lot of it down. But that weird design building was Burr, built by Burr's Welcome back in the early '70s, and they built their manufacturing plant in Greenville. They I forgot how many hundreds of acres they bought because in New York they got in Rochester they got landlocked, and they were unionized. So they moved down here and they didn't they didn't want union. They paid the employees. Dollar for dollar matching your retirement, health care. I mean, they paid them good. They, you just weren't going to get union in there because they, they were just, it was, they made it too good. I mean, when you get a dollar for dollar match on your retirement, that's pretty stinking good. I mean, you know, and that's what they did. It was cheaper for them to do that than have to pay union dues and put up with all the unions junk and all that. And um, so, but they all worked. Well, my brother worked down in an important place, and um, I forgot what exactly where he was. He wasn't on the he wasn't on the, uh, the the lines where he had to be sanitary to make the pills and stuff. He may have been in packaging or shipping somewhere. I don't know where he was. They take naps. They go out and find some place to take a nap. They play uh, tape ball. They get a broomstick, unscrew it from the bottom, 
and take a bunch of tape and tape together for a ball and, and play ball. <laughs> Put bases out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> take that, get it in the corner somewhere and take a nap, you know? Um, and then you know, always somebody on watch, watch when the, the boss was coming back in or whatever. You know, they take turns. And, uh, well, you know, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, your poverty will come on you. So how long will you sleep while sluggard? See, I know people will even sleep at work. All right? We don't want to be doing that. And we want to be good, good employees. Amen? Um, Proverbs 18.9 9 says this. He that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. He's akin, he's akin to a great waster. Now, I'm no big fan of the unions. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I know there are people there are people who are just huge fans of unions. I think that they're destructive to work ethic. They just, I don't, I don't like them. Um, you've got people, a uh, reason uh, our car manufacturing business is in trouble is because of unions. I remember the car of the Saturn. That was one of the better cars that GM had. As a matter of fact, it sold really well. But guess what? It was made in Tennessee. It was a non-union plant. And when the government got involved and, and basically bailed GM out by buying it and then was going to turn it back over, guess what the first thing they did was? They nixed the Saturn division to pay back the unions for their support. Shut the plant down. To make sure that the union jobs kept money coming in, and you—I mean, th those people just about kill you over talking bad about unions. Your cost of living wouldn't be as bad in those cities if you didn't have unions. We'd be more productive without the unions. You know, you can't. My, I, my dad—we uh, moved—we moved to Florida when I was a kid. My parents were divorced; he'd remarried. We moved to Florida for about a year and a half, and um, down in the West Palm Beach area. And there's a, there was a uh, company called Pratt and Whitney. We made aircraft engines. Still do. They, they're Pratt and Whitney aircraft engines. Made aircraft engines. And he got a job there because he was a machinist. He worked at Union Carbide in Greenwood. He was a machinist. Went down there. <coughs> well, Union Carbide in North Carolina was not unionized. Pratt and Whitney in Florida was. And we wonder why because all the Northerners moved down there and they're all from Union states. Okay? So he didn't want, they said, you want, he said, I'm not, I don't want to join the Union. He didn't join the Union. So he'd go to the, you know, go to the parts place and order a part. Don't have that. Go to the window and say, well, I need this tool. You know, we don't have it. I stop. And after about two weeks, he figured it out. He wasn't going to get anything to do his job if he didn't join the union. Join his union, next day, uh, as soon as he joined the union, everything he'd been asking for was there. Suddenly there. All They had it. It's, you're not going to get it because you're not, you're not in the union. We're just going we're, we're to get you to uh, get fired or get quit. You're just going to, you know, you, there's your choices. Join. Get fired, quit, you're, but you're not going to you're not going to be here non-union. And um, of course, they get mad because they say we we did all the stuff to get the prices. Well, you you got a huge salary, but now because you live where you live, you're going to have to pay a lot more money. My, my brother-in-law lives in California, and our first house cost us about ninety thousand dollars here in Greensboro. He said that house where we live on a on a lot that's just you know enough uh, dirt down both sides to run one of those hand push lawnmowers that's not electric, the old fashioned kind. And the wheels turn the blade, would cost well over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that same house. Cost of living so high. He had a as a matter of fact, he had a house that was about a third the size of ours and he paid more for it than we paid for ours. And he did. He cut his grass with one of those lawnmowers because his yard was so small. You didn't by the time you, you didn't need to crank up a lawnmower, you could go out there with that thing and be done. All right. Um, so, everybody wave at Melanie. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, he that is slothful in his work. So, anyway, what we've done now is you come in and you're a hard worker and you want to be a hard worker and uh, they've got it fixed so that you only tighten up 15 bolts an hour. That's all you're required to do. They figure the averages, that's what you should be able to do. That's all you're going to 
the bosses want to get in the 20. Nope, we're not. We're going to have to renegotiate our contract if we're going to have to do 20 bolts an hour. And if you come in and start doing more, they'll get up. No, we don't do that. You, you're, um, I've been around people who work for the state, and I'm telling you, you know, we'll, we'll get people come out and do stuff where I work, and, you know, they'll come out to do painting or they'll come out to do uh, repair. And they got to take uh, three trips to the truck. Well, I'm just painting. Man. They're just painting. They got to take three trips to take that. They got two guys in there. One of them sitting on his phone taking a break for the whole time the other one's working. Then they switch off. And the other one. This kind of stuff is not biblical, it, it destroys work ethic. And we need better work ethic. I mean, as, as, as you know, employees, we need to have good work. We need to buy into what we're doing and be good employees. Produce better. You know, we got people now demanding $15 an hour to stand at McDonald's and take your order who can't speak and who can't read it back to you and who can't do it right. You can't count change back. I've had them try to count change back in there. I mean, I, I, I added the tip somewhere one time and I rounded, you know, I took and added the cents to make it an even dollar and then added, so put it over, you know, a higher amount than it would have been. It's just easier to do, you know. And so I, I wrote down, and they're, and they're down, and they're, they're trying to, I said, it's such and such. <laughs> they get out a calculator to add 338 to 1662 or whatever. It's $20. <laughs> it's $20. $20. Now, it's $20. I told you that. Okay? And they want $15 an hour. But they don't want to work. And you see, um, if you're slothful in work, you're the brother to a great waster. Your company, if you produce better, your company could afford to pay you better. If they were getting more production out of your work, they'd have a better bottom line. Okay? Proverbs twenty two twenty nine, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Okay? Uh, Proverbs 24, 34. Uh, well, it's, it's, it says the same thing as we uh, read earlier about, you know, the, uh, the uh, Proverbs 6, 11. So shall thy power become only as one that traveleth, and I want as an armed man. Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of the sluggish sluggard desireth and hath nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Now, fast all the time used to be uh, to me abundance and to more than enough, okay? Proverbs 21.5, the thoughts of the diligent tend toward plenteousness, but everyone that is hasty only to want. Back over to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15.58, therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Over in Proverbs, Proverbs 13, 11, Wealth not earned, but won in haste, or unjustly, or from the production of things for vain or detrimental use, such riches will dwindle away, but he who gathers little by little will increase his riches. Wow. Now notice it says here, won in haste or unjustly. When you're getting paid for not doing your job, now, <clears throat> they just arrested two um, police officers in Southport, North Carolina, the chief and the deputy chief. They worked. They were work, They would go in on their third shift shift, and they were driving truck routes. They would go and be at work, and then leave and go drive a truck all night, and did it for a couple of years or whatever. Yeah, that's unjustly. They're not, they're not doing their job. They're moonlighting somewhere else and not even doing their job. They got, ca they got caught. They got arrested. <laughs> yeah, they got arrested <laughs> and lost their job. Huh? And they could say that's exactly right. They, they, could, um, they could confiscate their possessions and stuff and sell it off. Yep. Um. Proverbs 14, 23, in all, in all labor, there is profit. 
but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. Pen, penury. I, I always have a hard time with that. Penury. Uh, and that just means minuscule. But notice, labor, there's profit. Talking a good talk doesn't make the money. Doing the work, working diligently does. Okay? Proverbs 25, 21. Proverbs 21 through 25 and 26. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Proverbs 21, verses 25 and 26. The, desi the desire of slothful kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. He covets greedily all day long, but the uncompromisingly righteous gives and does not withhold. Amplified classic. And then our last verse, John 6, 27. Labor not for meat that perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. So notice we're to labor for that which endureth unto, now, unto the everlasting life. Well, how could that be? Well, remember, he said, do everything we do as a service of Christ, as unto the Lord. We, we do, we do it as unto the Lord. Amen? And so when we do that, we're set, we're, we are making eternal, eternal um, investments. God honors that. God honors us the hand of a diligent. God honors those who work not as men servants or, or men pleasers with eye service, but as unto the Lord. Our job is important, providing for our household and our family, but we need to do it from the Christian perspective and the Christian heart, and, and that as a believer to honor the Lord in what we do. Amen? So that he's pleased with what we do, and he'll reward you. Amen? Make where you work better. When you leave and you quit and you retire and you go off into the, the realm of beach travels and mountain travels and whatever else it is you think you're going to do during your retirement, make sure you leave where you spent your time better. That there, you know, and honor the Lord in what you do. Amen? All right. Praise God. Well, that's the end of our teaching on establishing priorities. God, spouse, children, church, job. And uh, we trust you got blessed by this. And it just, you know, and this is, this is one of those things. It's not to get up and run around the room and shout. Nobody will get up and run around and shoot or shout about having to go to work and be a good employee or needing to go to work and be a good employee. We don't, do, we don't shout over that. We shout over, money cometh to me now in Jesus' name. We, we shout over that. Bye-bye chickens and all that stuff. Remember Dr. Thompson teaching on bye-bye chickens? You know, we're not going to peck around. You know, eagle was born, and the chickens raised it. And, uh, you know, it, and all, it's out there just pick, pecking, 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 pecking. And, all it, and one day he just looked up in the sky and thought, why am I down here pecking? You know, and, uh, and of course, chicken, they can fly. They can fly maybe 10 or 15 feet, about four or five foot off the ground. That's about it. But that eagle began to flap. And all of a sudden, he began to lift and began to lift and began to lift. He looked back down at all the chickens down there going, boop, 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 and he just went, bye-bye chickens, bye-bye chickens. He was going to soar. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we want to soar with the Lord, don't we? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So until next time, uh, remember to join us this Sunday. And um, we're teaching on the subject of, of love. And I, think, I trust you'll be blessed this Sunday also. So until then, God bless you. And remember that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Praise the Lord. God bless you.